Okay, good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of the City of Lenore for Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. We welcome you here this evening. And as we normally do when we get started, we'll start in just a few minutes with a moment of silence and then we will have our Pledge of Allegiance. Before that, I would like to call a roll of who is with us here in the uh, council chambers tonight and who's on Zoom with us. But first, before we do that, let's stop and wish uh, our city manager a happy birthday today. He, he turned uh, 20, 25 plus. <laughs> And anyway, he said his, uh, what is it you came up and said you were showing you the, yeah, his micometer said he's the body of a 25. You're making that up too. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday today. We appreciate uh, all you do for us and glad that I uh, hope you have a great birthday. All right, as we go to this time of uh, moment of silence and our pledge, we please keep uh, continue praying for uh, our city, our county, our state, and our country as we continue to recover and uh, hopefully keep moving forward uh, from our COVID situation that we've been in for over 14 months now. We hope we are moving in the right direction and, and seem to be. Uh, we still encourage people to uh, be safe, get your vaccinations if you possibly can, and do everything you can there, and continue any of those uh, safety measures that you feel are necessary uh, in your life. So uh, we pray for all those who are still taking care of us tonight. So please join us now. Rise for a moment of silence and our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. We salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we do our special recognition, let me I do need to call a roll of everyone here. We'll start with those up on the podium tonight. Uh, I'm the mayor and I'm here. We have Council Member Jonathan Beal. Council Member uh, Todd Perdue, Council Member David Stevens, Council Member Ben Willis, our City Attorney T.J. Rohr, City Manager Scott Hildebrand, Communications Director Joshua Harris, our Economic Development Director Kaylin Horn is also here, and Captain Andy Wilson is here from the Police Department. Did I do Joshua? I got you did. Okay, thank you. And then we welcome. Uh, the lady from our news topic is with us this evening. Thank you for being here. Now let's see who was with us on our Zoom tonight. Our Mayor Pro Tem, Chrissy Thomas, we know is with us. Chrissy? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Council members Ike Perkins and Ralph Presswood are both out of town. I'm not sure they're going to be with us tonight, and we wish them safe travels uh, with that. Our city clerk, Shirley Cannon. Our finance director, Donna Bean. Here. Okay, thank you. Our fire chief, Ken Hare. I'm here. Thank you. Our police chief, Brent Phelps. Keith Phelps, okay. Parks and Recreation I'm Director, Kenny Story. I'm here, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Public Utilities Director, Radford Thomas. I am here. Our planning director, Jenny Wheelock. No, I'm here. And our public works director, Jared Wright. I'm here. Thank you, sir. And we <clears throat> hope you're feeling better, Jared. Okay, we will move in now to our special recognition. And I'm going to come down at the podium as we recognize Sergeant Greg Snyder. Uh, Sergeant Snyder, Captain Wilson, they will come up. And tonight we we are happy for you, but sad to see you uh, uh, retire.
inspiring for us. Over 20 years of service to our police department, we want to say thank you for all that you've done, all you've meant to this fair city and to our great police department. We really appreciate it. Very proud to uh, work with you and been in service with you. And thank you for protecting our citizens for 20 plus years. And, yes, and probably even longer than that with other things that, that you've done. So we wish you well uh, in your retirement, which I don't know that it probably is in here, but when does that officially take place? Next Friday. Next Friday. Friday. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, let me uh, read this resolution uh, in, in recognition of a dedicated service. Whereas from March 12, 1990 to July 24, 1991, Gregory Fletcher Snyder served as a patrolman for the city of Lenore under the direction of Police Chief Jack Warwick. That, upon leaving the city of Lenore, he served as canine officer for the McDowell's County Sheriff's Office, investigations officer for the Old Fort Police Department, and impact drill instructor for the North Carolina Department of Corrections. That on the 20th of August in, in the year of 2001, Greg Snyder was rehired by Chief Warwick and due to his dedication and diligence in performing in an exemplary manner, advanced through the ranks to achieve the position of Sergeant in the year of 2013. That Greg Snyder, as of the date of this resolution, has admirably and with great distinction served the citizens of Lenore during the tenures of four police chiefs and has served in a number of capacities in all three divisions of the Lenore Police Department, patrol, investigations, and support services. That he has formed relationships with the citizens and co-workers through a genuine concern and professional dedication to duty. Greg has contributed to the success of the community, not only professionally, but through and with the support of his family. That society and law enforcement as a whole has undergone many changes and challenges over the last 30 years, and Sergeant Snyder has stayed abreast through these changing trends to remain an effective mentor and leader within the department and community at large. That prior to being hired by the city of Lenore, he served his country as a squad leader for the United States Army's 82nd Airborne from the years 1985 to 1989. That in August 1993, Greg earned an associate's degree in criminal justice at Western Piedmont Community College, where he has also received EMT training. Over the years, he has received a number of instructor cert certificates and was instrumental in developing the city's canine program special response team, and physical fitness program. That Greg Snyder completed Police Law Institute in 2005 and received the Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate in 2008 and has made a number of significant contributions throughout his career, serving as school resource officer for High Brighton High School, canine handler for DOC, incident command, criminal investigations, physical fitness instructor, SeaCat uh, instructor, chaplain, and logistics. That he has humbly served the citizens of Lenore and Caldwell County and will be retiring on June 1st, 2021 with over 30 years of credible service in the North Carolina lo local government retirement system. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the authority of, as a mayor and city manager on behalf of the city council that Greg, Sergeant Greg Snyder has been an exemplary employee and is himself the epitome of the professional law enforcement officer. His contributions to the safety and well-being of the citizens of Lenore and officers of the Lenore Police Department will be held in high esteem and remembrance by this governing body as well as persons impacted by his accomplishments. This is the 18th day of May, 2021. Sergeant, congratulations. so well represented along with our, our coins. This presented to Gregory S. Snyder, Lenore Police Department, in recognition of 20 plus years of dedicated and outstanding service to the city of Lenore and its citizens by the Lenore City Council. Sergeant, thank you very much for all that you have meant to this community. I'm gonna give you these and then we're gonna let Captain Wilson do some things and you speak and then we'll shoot some pictures if that's okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank sir. you. Uh, first of all,
for, foremost, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Manager Elderbrand, we appreciate the opportunity for our employees to be recognized like this. It's, it's a big thing for us as a department and for them and their families. Uh, a few things about Sergeant Schneider. Uh, we've been together uh, for my entire career. Uh, he's been here a little longer than me, but um, learned a lot of good things uh, from him. A uh, couple key words that kind of sums him up for me is mentor. Uh, Sergeant Snyder was uh, the, the younger officer, officers were always drawn to Sergeant Snyder. He always wanted the younger officers so he could mold them to become better police officers. And he's always uh, very successful at that. When he taught the BLAT program for a number of years in physical fitness, uh, those uh, men and women in that program were, were always strongly drawn to, to, to him and the way he carried himself uh, and the things that he instilled in them. Um, so we, we do appreciate that. Um, also, protector. Uh, Sergeant Schneider has always been one of our biggest protector of our men and women at the Little Police Department and the police department itself. Um, the, you, could always, you could always knew that the high ground was always covered and over what was taken care of when Sergeant Schneider was there. And uh, something that we all um, look to him for is his, his steadfast uh, love and, and, and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And so uh, he, he is a chaplain. He, um, he helps the guys when they're struggling and the, and the guys and girls when they're struggling. And uh, we always look up to him for that. So, uh, brother, we're going to miss you. We love you. And... Thank you, sir. I want to thank you guys for being part of this journey. Uh, and when I started in 1990, I, I had no clue what I was getting into. And you know, I was leaving active duty, uh, 82nd Airborne, and we were going anywhere in 18 hours. Uh, and I came here, uh, and I started here, and I left to go uh, start a canine program up, and I was called back. And since 1990, I have worked with each department that's represented here with my department head on Zoom that represents the other employees that belong to the city. And let me tell you, we've got some fantastic people. We've got some fantastic resources. We've got some fantastic departments. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, you know, I spend 84 hours minimum here on a pay cycle. Uh, that's more time than I spend at home with my family. So this is family. The city of Lenore is family, whether people realize it or not. And so after you come accustomed to having family, you create relationships. And each individual division that belongs to the city, I've got family inside that division that I could call on or they could call on me and we take care of each other. Uh, it's absolutely phenomenal, the relationships that came about from this career. But I will tell you that uh, down here at the, at the end of the road, the, the police department, that's some fantastic people down there. Uh, some absolute fantastic people that at 2 o'clock in the morning when you are facing the absolute most evil thing in your mind and you call 911, that's the people you want to show up to give you a night of peace and sleep. So they often go uh, unrecognized and unnoticed by society, but I'm going to tell you, there's some phenomenal people that work in that division down there, that branch. Uh, and, and I would like to be able to, to pat them all on the back, and I will over the next couple of days. I'll spend time with every single person that's down there to say goodbye. Uh, some are having some troubles with goodbyes, but that's, that's the way relationships are. So they'll have their chance uh, to, uh, to end their career one day with 30 years of service. And uh, I, can't wait, I can't wait to see the magnificent things that they, that they do in their 30 years. But I'm going to tell you, this has been phenomenal. I don't want to leave, but I have to because of the retirement system, the way it works. But I don't want to go anywhere. I've got family all the way around me. Each division, you know. I wave at my family on the screen. They're not waving back. There we go. Come on. I love y'all. I love everybody here. Thanks for being today, Chief. I know the Chief would wave at me. But no. up. Oh. There we go. So here we go. It's good. So everybody, you know, we're all doing the same thing. We're all honoring the cities, uh, uh, the, the people of the, the Lenore, the citizens. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So as long as we take care of them, we take care of ourselves, it's going to be a better world and a better place. So I don't want to take up any more of your time. 
I've had 30 years of it, and uh, I appreciate every opportunity, and I appreciate every adventure that we've had together. And somebody will take my place, and we will be okay. So God bless you, God keep you, and we'll all return one day together. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sergeant, after hearing all that, I'm sorry this has been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> no, thank you for what you've meant to us. City of Lenore, to our community, to your family, and I'm talking about your whole family. Oh, family. family. Oh, yeah. Uh, and what you have meant. It's obvious that you have been a great impact on that. Uh, we can tell that people will struggle with you leaving, but we'll know you'll be around to help whenever I want. you can. So, if we can, let's shoot a picture. Yes, sir. On that, and we'll get the council here, and you guys, you want to. No, nope, nope. I'm just the attorney. Okay, very nice. That was a great start to the meeting. We uh, certainly appreciate all that Sergeant Snyder has meant to our, our city and our police department. So we congratulate him and his wonderful family for that. All right, we'll move on then. We do not have a, any matter scheduled for public hearing this evening. So we'll move to our consent agenda items consisting of items A through G, which are item A are minutes of the city council meeting of Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Item B is the resolution, and that'll be the approval of the resolution in honor and recognition of Sergeant Greg Snyder, 20 plus years of service to the Lenore Police Department and City of Lenore and its citizens. Item C is the resolution for, this will be for surplus property. Uh, if, we, if we approve this, it'll be the resolution declaring Sergeant Snyder's badge and service weapon, which is a SIG Sauer Model P220R, uh, serial number 37B058865 as surplus property, which will be given presented to him. Parking lot agreements, item D, this is between the City of Lenore and Water Life Church. 
This would be approval of the agreement between the city of Lenore Water Life for property located at 1007 Morganton Boulevard Southwest, which is owned by Water Life Church. This lease would become effective June 1 of 2021 through May 31 of 2031. Item E is a parking lot agreement with uh, City of Lenore and United Presbyterian Church. Uh, this is between the two entities for a property located at 415 Pennell Street Northeast, which is owned by the United Presbyterian Church. The lease will also be June 2021 through May of 31, 2031. Uh, item F is a capital uh, project budget ordinance for Linkside Connector slash host Hotel Street project. Consideration of the capital uh, project budget ordinance in the amount of $222,215 to authorize activities to include the expenditure of funds for the engineering, right-of-way acquisition, construction, and project administration for the Linkside Connector slash Hotel Street Capital Project. And item G is the call for a public hearing. This is for a streets and subdivision ordinance update. The uh, City Council will be requested to call for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021 to consider amendments to Chapter 18, Streets and Sidewalks, and Chapter 19, Subdivisions of the Lenore Code of Ordinances. Note these chapters were excluded from the omnibus ordinance adopted by the City Council in January of 2021 and must be amended prior to July 1, 2021. Those are the items A through G, and I will open that up to the council for any uh, discussion on any of these items that they seem necessary. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we pull items D and E, the parking lot agreements for Water Life and the parking lot agreement for United Presbyterian from the consent agenda, please. Okay. So we have a uh, request that items D and E be pulled from the agenda at this time. And Mr. Mayor, um, can I ask a question about item F? Um, this is to approve all of those uh, parts of that project. Is there a start date with that project that we know of? Not this time. We just want to make sure we have it uh, preserved before July 1st, new fiscal year. That money can be held in the capital fund. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. We've uh, asked the e, e, uh, e and F be held out, and I will open then for D and E. D and e. Excuse me, D and E. I'm sorry. So A, B, and C, F, and G. Uh, if if there's anyone who would like to make a motion. Make a motion that we approve A, B, C, C F, and G. Yes. Of the consent agenda as presented. Okay. We have a motion from Council Member Stevens that we uh, approve items A, B, C, F, and G on the consent agenda. If there's no other question, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And on the phone. Aye. Thank you. And that uh, passes unanimously. Okay. Now we will open uh, items D and E for discussion. Mr. Perdue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we got our agendas, I, I just started doing a little bit of, uh, a couple of things caught my eyes with respect to these these leases for the, uh, in particular is item D with the uh, agreement as proposed with Water Life Church. And so I started looking at some other leases because the church, the city has parking lot leases throughout the city. We just approved one a meeting or two ago for a for-profit entity. Um, these two, of course, are, are non-profit entities. And so I started looking at the terms of that one, and I went back and looked at another one that um, the city has a, a, a lease interest in with the uh, First Baptist Church parking lot behind the uh, First Baptist Church as it borders Ridge Street. <clears throat> and it, it appears to me uh, that, that the water life lease is disproportionately greater in, in scope as far as price than any other lease that I could find with respect to um, leases with, with for-profit or non-profit businesses. As proposed, this lease would be $2,500 annually for 10 years for 65 parking spaces, and the city would commit to sweep with litter on a weekly basis um, during the PQs period. The United Presbyterian as proposed is $750 so not quite, well, uh, roughly a third of the cost of the water life lease for a 10 year term, similar in term, for a not quite as large, but close to similar size number of parking spaces, 53 to 55 by my count, I stand to be corrected if that's not accurate, with no maintenance requirements from the city. 
Um, the other church lease that I could find was the First Baptist Church Little Lease. Now, that's, that lease goes back, originated in 2006 for a 20-year term. There's no annual lease payment uh, that uh, the city makes to First Baptist Lenore. It's a joint agreement with the county as well as the city and First Baptist Church of Lenore. It's a much larger area that's got heavy daily use, at least through the work week. Uh, the city and county maintain the parking area and the grounds. There was an initial payment of 37250 split evenly between the city and the county, which comes out to $18,625 per entity, the city and the county for that 20 year period that was paid up front to take care of maintenance. But when you amortize that out or annualize the cost out of that lease to the city of Lenore, it's $931 per year, and it is a 20 year term. So I, I, I think that the, the, I understand why we're interested in leasing that spot, uh, just as I do with United Presbyterian, just as I do with First Baptist Lenore. I just think that the cost is at least uh, three times greater than the, or, or not quite three times greater than the other lease I compared to First Baptist, and it is a full three times greater annually for the United Presbyterian lease. So I just question where, where these numbers came from, uh, what discussions were, were had with that, and um, I, I would invite it for discussion from, from staff and any other council members. They may have the same concerns. Maybe they don't. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying I'm against it. But I just think it bears, uh, it stands out to me as a, as a much higher than what we have been used to uh, fee for paying for these leased parking spaces. Thank you, Mr. Purdue. Anyone else have any comments? Uh, Mr. Hildebrand, you want to make some comments to that or any of our staff that's on call? Yeah, I'll, I'll first, ref, I guess, defer to uh, Jared Wright, who had, I guess, contact with those entities, but also Kenny's story as well. Uh, again, the, these are for our recreational needs. Um, Mr. Purdue is correct. The, um, the lot, on, I guess, on Pennell uh, is used greatly because it's actually the Greenway. The church approached, uh, I guess, approached us several years ago about utilizing their parking lot. And I think one of their uh, members there went back and did the sidewalk from the parking lot to the Greenway as a part of a scout project. So we have a relationship ongoing with them for a number of years. Uh, Water Life acquired the property back when they moved the church to the old mall. Uh, at the time, they had a lot of uh, issues, I guess, with the parking lot and asked the city to participate up front with that project. Uh, we did not at that time because there's no public purpose at that time. And then they came back to us at a later time suggesting we go back and contribute some because we have a lot of parking out there during, I guess, ball games, uh, especially for four or five months a year. And uh, Kenny Story ran the numbers for that, and he can go back and probably let you know the numbers of folks that use it in the days of the week. Uh, but we just came up with those numbers and conversations. And Jared had a point, if you want to go back, you had a point of contact with those folks and talk to them, I think. I'll All right. We'll recognize Mr. Uh, Wright, our public works director on that. Yes, th this process has, uh, has taken the better part of two years to get to where we are and present something to you, Council. Um, of course, you know, we, we have a greenway easement that we've been discussing with Water Life, but as part of that conversation, they also approached the city about contributions with the use of that parking lot, given that it is adjacent to our Mulberry Recreation Facility and has been used for a number of years by the public to access the outdoor amenities at, uh, at the rec center. Um, as far as that, that value, uh, I asked Water Life to present us with a value that they thought was reasonable, and that was what we got from them. Mr. Story, uh, you have anything to add or say uh, concerning this? Uh, I would just say, uh, basically, um, we only use that parking lot, basically, uh, mostly for our baseball softball seasons, which were, you know, three to three and a half at the most four months uh, per, per year. Uh, depending on uses of practices and games. Um, but the figures come from that, basically what you got as far as parking spaces of 65 spots. Um, we do not use it on a daily basis um, except through the baseball softball season. So that's where the numbers came from on the 65 parking spaces. Um, of course, in years past, we've uh, never had any issues uh, before, uh, and it's not an issue now, but uh, um, when Belch was there and the other companies that were there, uh, 
we had no agreements with them. They they were fortunate enough just to let us use it. So, and uh, that that's where we're at on that. But it's uh, possibly three three and a half months per year that you know we use it some. You might have twenty cars there one day and sixty five the next. But uh, uh, that's where we're at. Okay. What is the what is the association with the Greenway in the parking lot, or, or is there one? The Greenway will go through that. Greenway line. will come through there. So it's, this is important that this is so. Are they it's tied two, together. It's, it's two issues, but they want them tied together. Okay. The Greenway will go through there eventually if the easement's passed. But uh, you know that's just like Scott said. Uh, what we're looking at now, but we do have the Greenway pay behind Mulberry Rec Center that will connect to that parking lot uh, once all the easements and things are taken care of. But uh, not sure how many people will use that parking lot on their part. A lot of people using the Mulberry Rec Center uh, Greenway now are uh, parking at the Mulberry Rec Center. Okay. Anyone else have any particular comments or I mean I know this has been something we we've, we've used for a long time uh, as, as Mr. Story said back when the mall was built Belk was there we we had I guess an understanding that uh, people that were playing ball on the Mulberry the lower fields of Mulberry would park there cross the little bridge creek there and for soccer baseball and whatever was going on and use that and we that's been an understanding for a long time it seems to be now it's changing uh, as water life church has now taken over the the property uh, so anyway it's we're kind of where we are i don't know what uh, mr purdue i know your feelings of this you can we could uh, ask for it to be tabled uh, we, and discussed further we've got a recommendation from from staff i just had a few questions and i, I think they've been answered okay Okay. Any other concerns or questions at this point concerning these two agreements, uh, D and E, on our consent agenda? I would ask that we consider them separate. Okay. That would be fine. All right. Let's, uh, let's consider item E then, which would be uh, the agreement between City of Lenore and United Presbyterian Church first, if that's okay. And I'll ask for... Uh, a motion concerning that. Uh, for, uh, can I have one more question? You before, sure can. Yes, sir. Motion. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I, I, I just thought of it. How are the other uh, the other agreement? It's all. It's the other parking agreements are basically completely individual, depending on the entity. There's no formula. There's no set thing that we can go by. It's all depends on. Well, we'll take a thousand. We'll take fifteen. So that was my point. Yeah. The, I don't know how they can be that much disparity between the two. Were they aware that, that we were paying this what were the other churches and other parking lots that we were working with? I'm not sure if that was just good. No, and we've got, I mean, we have some, We like we did last month, for a, a taxable lot that right. we cover the tax value, we, you know, the taxes so that are paid to city and county yeah, these, on that. These, these, these are nonprofit, so they it's are. a little bit different some some ways. Right. Uh, we have some mutual agreements with... Um, the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church. I think we have six agreements total, but yeah. most of them are. Right. And then we've got private. We've got private agreements with other ones yeah. that are. It just depends it, on. It's, the it's again. It's mainly the entity negotiates with the city or says what you know what they'll do. Yeah. Right. Um, with one that, so. one thing I would add is um, there. Uh, Mr. Hildebrand did explain that the Greenway and the parking lot are two separate issues. Right. It is important to keep that straight. The The lease itself uh, contemplates that the city will use the premises as a public municipal parking lot for the purposes of overflow parking for events and activities taking place in Mulberry Recreational Center. It does not mention the Greenway specifically in it. Okay. Okay. And, and we have not said, we have not tried to negotiate that. Is that that's what we're doing now? Or so it says my, we my, have. My thoughts on that is, I mean, I would, I would like for that, but it's within the threshold of what staff has the authority to do from right. a dollar standpoint. Right. And and that so we have a recommendation of what the staff's brought well, and to is, us. I think it's an important. It is. It's, it's an just $25,000 over traffic. 10 years. Yeah, right. Right. And it, But it does. It gets a ton of traffic. It gets a ton of usage. 
I mean, I remember when I when my kids played t-ball there. That's where we and that's where we park. Yeah. So, well, but so. it also only gets that traffic for about four months a year because uh, we don't have year-round heavy usage. Do we play soccer on those fields at all or anything no. like that? No. no. Anymore. So unless it's just purely recreational on an individual or family basis only about four months a year there's some shelters on that end of the park as well people access because we do have a bridge that crosses over from the park to the church lot and you may see that on the map there and that, again that's where the greenway would cross as well that is a good question mr story is there any soccer on those fields at all no, no. the no. only soccer we have mayor is uh we let with lysa uh practice underneath the lights uh uh, once daylight saving time changes, uh, they do not park in that parking lot. They all park in uh, Mobile Rec parking lot because we only have usually one or two teams uh, at a time there. So we uh, they park in the Mobile Rec Center. That's what I thought. Park Everything lot. else is out at our soccer complex at Zach's Four. Yeah, or LHS. One of the other. Yes. Okay. Then. Uh, Mayor and Council, I have a question. Is it appropriate or at a time to think about do we negotiate that rate or is that where Todd is going? Is that something as part of the discussion? I think that's what we were we were kind of saying is that it you've been this, these negotiations have been happening for how long? Two years. Two years. Since the church and right. Jenny Wheelock was involved yes. as well when the I guess the proposal was put before uh, when they moved there. Yeah. So it's been two years, I would say, Jenny, is that correct? Two years in the work. Okay. Okay. We, um, if there's any other questions or concerns, if not, let's, we're going to let's deal with item E first, which okay. is. I want to make sure that's what we're still dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> item E, <laughs> this is United Presbyterian Church in the City of Lenore's agreement for uh, uh, 415 Pennell Street Northeast, which is related to the Greenway use in that in that area so i'll entertain a motion i'll make a motion that that item e the lease agreement between city of lenore and united presbyterian church be approved as it has pre been presented in our agenda okay I have a motion from councilmember purdue uh, <coughs> for the parking lot agreement between the city of lenore united presbyterian church as presented if no other questions i'll call for the question all in favor please say aye aye, aye. on the phone aye thank you aye any opposed <laughs> I didn't hear any. Okay. All right. Item E is passed. Now we'll go to item D, which is the parking lot agreement between the city of Lenore and Water Life Church. And I will entertain um, a motion there. May I ask one more question before we do a motion? You certainly can. Yes, sir. Uh, if we were to not enter into an agreement for those, for that parking, for those parking places or any other parking places in that particular lot, what would be uh, the result of residents using that parking lot by their own volition to cross over into our Mulberry Recreation Park? They'd technically be on private property, I guess. Okay. That would right. belong to Water Life Church, I guess. They could have the cars uh, they could removed. Have, uh, yeah, I they could have them towed. Yeah. That's, it's their parking lot. Do they own that entire side, I assume, yes. and into the back? Okay. just wanted to ask a question because. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the, uh, although it's a reluctant, I think it is a high uh, lease agreement, but I think it's important. I think it's an important piece of property. I think this is, staff has been working on this. This is what they've brought to us. And um, um, I think we'll, we can use it. And I think it will be vital to. Uh, the rec and to what we have in future plans. So I'll make a motion we approve the lease agreement. Okay, we have a motion from Council Member Willis that we approve the uh, parking lot agreement between the City of Lenore and Water Life Church as presented for 1007 Morgan the Boulevard Southwest. Any other comment, question? A call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Chrissy. So we have. Aye. And Chrissy. I'm all for it. Okay. Voted aye. So we have. Passes. David. 3 2. 3 2. Okay. So I'm going to vote. Okay. 
thank you for that discussion and thank you for um, your concerns of those kind of situations. They are things that we need to certainly work on uh, as we try to to work together to be all of us be good citizens in our sure. community. So anyway, that's a good good question. Thank you for that. Okay, I, we'll I, move I, on then to uh, uh, requests and petitions of any citizens and. Uh, I think most everybody with us tonight here are our, our staff members. Um, if there's anyone who would like to comment, lady, our news topic, if you would. <laughs> okay. You already said that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you can read about it tomorrow. Yeah, Carmen. we'll read about it tomorrow. Yeah. Carmen. On that. And there's anyone on the uh, uh, call that has any comments to, uh, to make at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on then. We do not have reports from our boards and commissions this evening so we'll move on to the report and recommendations of the city manager mr hildebrand the birthday boy oh boy um, <laughs> a couple items of information this evening uh city council will conduct a fy 2021-2022 uh, budget work session on thursday this thursday may 20th at 6 p.m third floor city hall that's if you vote for that motion later in the meeting um, <laughs> <laughs> also the planning board will conduct a virtual meeting on monday may 24th 5 30 in these chambers uh the well, I guess virtual won't be in these chambers, but typically they're in these chambers. Uh, the Committee of the Whole will meet on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, May 25th, 8.30, uh, Third Floor City Hall. That may be a regular meeting. It may be a budget work session. It depends on what we get through on Thursday night. And the Foothills Regional Airport Authority will meet on Wednesday, May 26th at noon at the airport. And city offices will be closed on Monday, May 31st in observance of Memorial Day. And that's for your information. And then I'll get up here and go. Okay. Well, Mr. Hildebrand's getting ready. Are there any other dates that we need to uh, make mention of and want to know of? I think so. Not that's. Can't think of anything right off the top of my head. So. He won't be here on the 20th. Okay. We'll find out tonight who will. I know Christy's going to be. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I used to get a fancy book. Time is hard, John. You have, you'll get the full package. Actually, you've been emailed this evening, and it's on the website as well, the full budget, um, recommended budget, plus the PowerPoint slides, which you have in your hands, and also um, three things we sent out. Joshua, what's the third thing? <laughs> We said that you have everything that I'm going to talk about, you have uh, access to, and so does the public. It's on the website, and I'll get to that page in a minute. But um, pursuant to uh, general statute, uh, NC General Statute 159.11, um, the Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act, I'm pleased to present to you the recommended FY 2021-22 budget for your review and consideration. Um, this document was prepared based on our meeting in February, our retreat, and also our March budget retreat, and also the year worth of Zoom meetings we've had, uh, talking about a variety of items that the uh, City Council wants us to go back and, and move forward on and all those priorities. As we mentioned, the priorities that we, the whole guiding document is the priorities you set back in um, February, March. Uh, your number one priority at that time and, and still today is continue efforts to offer competitive compensation and benefits to employees. Uh, two was pursue market rate housing, encourage affordable housing, implement branding wayfinding plan, develop strategies to address commercial blight citywide and downtown, address major appearance issues, uh, continue to fund our street paving plan, uh, continue to fund water and sewer capital improvement plan, uh, develop strategies for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, your third highest priority was continue to fund sidewalk greenway and over mountain victory trail uh, develop west end area neighborhood plan and your fourth priority was to go back and support code enforcement including strategic foreclosures uh, develop a plan to address litter in the community with state and local partners uh, reinitiate our neighborhood meetings once it's safe to do so and encourage uh, whitnell and west end area improvements so that's our guiding document we try to go back and address in our budget along with the other operational day-to-day -day things we do. The elephant in the room and has been for the, the, the county the, this year is the revaluation and requirement for revenue neutral tax rate, you have to disclose that. 
So under state law, each county has to at least every eight years conduct a reevaluation of all real property uh, in their county. And the purpose of that reevaluation is to go back and establish or reestablish equity among properties uh, that may have appreciated or depreciated value at different rates since that last evaluation, and that's for tax purposes. So there are four components of the tax base we have. Uh, one is the real property, which is your land buildings. There's personal property. There's also your motor vehicles, and there's public service companies, such as your Duke Powers, your Piedmont Natural Gas, and those things. So those four components make up your tax base. Although our land values went up, and I'll go through that, land values went up a little over 9% for the real property during the revaluation. Uh, personal property actually decreased by 12%. It fluctuates yearly, and I'll get into that in a minute. Registered motor vehicles are relatively flat for us, and public service company properties anticipated to decrease this year, uh, and some of those are appealing now, and that goes to the state to make those determinations. So overall, our base is relatively unchanged from last year. There's some growth. State law also requires us to go back and publish a revenue neutral tax rate after revaluation. Based on that technical definition, and I can get into, the, I can describe what that is. The revenue neutral property tax rate is at that rate that is estimated to produce revenue for the next fiscal year equal to the revenue that would have been produced for the next fiscal year if no reappraisal had occurred. However, you get to go back and have growth. You go back, look over the past eight years, look at your growth, and then add that percentage into your base and come up with a rate. If we use that as our baseline, the rate would be 62.83 cent per 100. However, we have large fluctuations, I mentioned a minute ago, in our personal property. Um, we have some folks here that generate a lot of personal property. And so those numbers can swing millions of dollars back and forth. And some of those do not um, pay. They pay their taxes, but it's refunded. So when you take that into consideration, and we looked at it, we ran this number a variety of ways, our proposed tax rate will be 57 cent per 100. Our current rate's 58 cent per 100. The rescue readiness tax, doing the same calculations, would be 0.92 cent per 100, but we're proposing to, 80, to leave it at 85 cent per 100. Again, there's personal property valuations coming to calculations, but in net result, there's not as high. And it's, I'll go in more detail Thursday night on this because it's a very complicated mm -hmm. process. The general fund budget is going to proposed to be 18,594,890. It's balanced, and I think it addresses your goals. We'll go through some of those in a minute. The tax rate's proposed to be 57 cent per 100. The rescue readiness tax at 0.85 cent per 100. And the total tax rate combined will be 57.85. All other general fund fees are unchanged, and the budget includes no borrowing and no use of fund balance. Here's our revenues. The biggest stream you see is 49% property taxes, 23% uh, sales taxes, 13% utility, utility franchise fees. Solid waste, 4%, 800,000, and then the other is 11%. Where does it go? The general fund, majority goes to public safety. Police and fire take over 50% of the budget. Uh, public works, 23% of the budget. Recreation, 10%. Legislative and, and administration, 5%. Finance, 4%. Planning, 2%. And again, this is general fund. We'll talk about water sewer next. Also this year, another complication, it's not a complication, but it is a complication, is the American Rescue Plan approved by Congress several um, months ago now. I guess it's been over two months. This will provide $5.6 billion to the state of North Carolina. Of that, $1.35 billion is earmarked for cities and towns, direct appropriations um, for that money. The city of Lenore has allocated $3,834,691. This proposed budget includes none of that money at this time. We're anticipating further guidance on that in the next couple of days to get more clarification what we can use it on and what we can't. But staff's currently developing a plan to go back and focus on two things that we think are the most important. We can spend money and it go away and next year you don't see it. We're looking at long-term capital assets that will be here years from now and also master planning, uh, such as downtown master plan, those type things. And those are approved. But we'll get more details on that and have more discussions with you on that as we go forward. But just want to point out it's a lot of money. It's not in the budget. All right. The downtown municipal service district, that budget's 184638 We We estimate the revenue neutral rate to be $0.20. Cent. It's currently 25 So we're going to recommend a $0.05 uh, cent reduction in that rate based on the increased values in real property downtown. Water wastewater fund. 
Total of 9629744 As you recall, back at our meeting uh, about six weeks ago, we approved a 2% increase in water and sewer rates. Uh, but there's no other increases in water and sewer at all except the 2%. And as you recall, last year we did not do any increase in water and sewer rates due to the pandemic. So basically 2%, that's been over two years. Where does the money come from? Rates. Water rates bring in about 66% of the revenue. Sewer brings in 32% of the revenue, and then miscellaneous fees and charges, 2%. Expenses, majority goes to water. As you know, we serve uh, water on the citizens of Lenore, but also Hudson and throughout the county as well. <clears throat> so you can see the breakdown of the graph there. I won't go through all those, but again, water is the majority of the expenditures there. Highlights. Uh, core services are continued with, uh, we think, realistic, conservative numbers. Um, we do take into consideration the COVID pandemic and some then certainly still exists, but we're also projecting some increases such as the pool reopening and some revenues there that we didn't get last year. So that's in, considered in the budget. Employee compensation, we're proposing to go back this year and do a 3% cost of living increase effective January 1st, uh, 2022. As you, we mentioned earlier, that's the number one um, priority of council and it's been our top priority for a number of years, but I think we're making progress that the budget includes 3% uh, cost of living January 1st. The budget funds a mandated 1.2% increase in the local government retirement system. Uh, also, the budget includes some money for the fire department in January of 2022 to restructure some pay to make it more um, closer to norms of what we face in the region. Insurance, our health insurance premiums increased 6% uh, this year, but we maintain the plan as is. Uh, the cost of property and liability insurance increased 9.5%, and our workers' comp insurance coverage decreased by 7%. I think uh, Ms. Donna Bean told me today, I think the difference is $21 between premiums last year and this year based on, on those. We'll get into more detail on that um, as we go. Uh, allocated positions. This budget has three additional positions this year. Uh, two of those positions we eliminated last year during the sanitation automation. Uh, after we went back and I guess looked at the, the processes, the routes, the equipment over the past year, we realized we need to keep some of that. And so uh, one position we're going to go back and, and propose to leave it back in sanitation collection. And another we're going to go back transition to downtown. The years ago we had a person downtown, it moved to cemetery, we're going to bring a person back full time downtown, but also this person will also clean three of our facilities downtown. By utilizing that person to do those, it basically negates the cost of that position because we're contracting that out so we can go back now. And so, uh, so there's two positions there, uh, sanitation, but again only cost of one. The other position is vehicle services. As we go back and do more routine maintenance and go back and keep our fleet um, doing the preventive maintenance, we go back and save money. And so we want to go back and, and get more staff to do that, but also allow our senior staff to go back and do more um, critical projects and also more planning with that. So again, three new positions, but uh, net of two uh, cost-wise. Street resurfacing, the budget allocates $390,000 for our pavement study. Um, I would note power bill money is decreasing every year and we expect it to decrease again this year. Uh, the budget also includes $200,000 in funding for strategic paving uh, based on your priorities uh, you set. And I think this year's priority would be Hospital Avenue once we go back and get the sidewalk um, yep. um, put in. Uh, Greenway Rail Trail, 75,000 Greenway improvements, 50,000 for Rail Trail. And we also have that grant we received this past year. We'll go back and be working on that as well. Downtown, the budget allocates our CDBG money this year, uh, again to Lenore High School Auditorium, the gym, Matt Cook Stadium, and also we go back and focus with the employee downtown on the cleanliness of that area as well. Code enforcement, the budget adds an additional $5,040 in funding for build, building demolition, which increases our funding to over $60,750, <coughs> and that's an increase over $22,750 of the past few years. So we're trying to make that a focus to go back. Again, we can put more money there, and the more we get, the more we'll do. But uh, I think that's enough for the staff can handle right now with what we have funded. Diversity, equity, inclusion. The budget includes funding in travel and training areas to initiate awareness of and develop strategies for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, technology. We continue to fund computer and information technology upgrades throughout the organization uh, with focus on <coughs> operations and security. <laughs> And also, it still includes the implementation of the advanced metering infrastructure project, which hopefully will be complete, concluded by late 
uh, summer, early fall. Environmental, the budget continues to fund the Western Piedmont Council of Governments Stormwater Partnership, where they manage and oversee our federal phase two stormwater program. Uh, also work is concluding now on the EPA Brownfield grant. We're doing the assessments around the community and also the Appalachian Regional Commission grant for the um, property we own on College of Virginia Street. Uh, all debt obligations are met within the budget. Some of the highlights of what we're buying this year in the general fund, uh, two post lift and a service truck and public works. Uh, fire station number two, the Creek Bank restoration, police department, 30 radios, parking lot repaving, fire and, uh, range repairs, uh, six vehicles, I think four new, two used for detectives, a park and recreation, aquatic center lights, a new roof, uh, awning and roof replacement at MLK Center with appropriation of capital for $558,000. Water and sewer capital, we have at the treatment plants, we've got flash basin repairs, generator and cameras for the uh, AWIA compliance, <coughs> operations building upgrades, two bleach filter pumps. In water distribution, we have a new truck, a service truck, and divisional valve replacement. Water resources, air handling improvements, wastewater collection, manhole improvements, flatbed, dump truck, concrete pad, lower creek plant, a mixture. Over total there's 1.21 million. And I think we're up a little bit from last year in capital uh, appropriations. Let me say thank you to Donna Bean. She spent hours and hours and hours. And uh, Joshua Harris as well. I bet we've um, ran these numbers hundreds of times. And he jokes, I think this presentation, we've done it 100 times as well. But uh, they've been great to, to work with, and also our department heads who uh, work very well together. And they understand that we're a team and uh, appreciate what they do and appreciate council for your direction on the budget. And uh, the last thing I have, come create with us in Lenore. So our budget work session is scheduled for Thursday, May 20th at 6 p.m., third floor city hall. A public hearing scheduled for Tuesday, June 1st, 6 p.m. in these chambers. Uh, the whole proposal and all the information that I've shared can be found at citylenore.com slash budget proposal. And it's online now. Um, I think tonight what you have to do is go back and pass a motion to go back and schedule a public hearing for the meeting on uh, June 1st, June 1st. 6 p.m. And other than that, I'll take questions now. We can wait uh, to Thursday and go through it in as deep as you want to go. Mr. Manager, I'd like to make one comment on your American Rescue Plan. Um, that that goes to show you <clears throat> the mindset of this council and the leadership from you as our manager to make long-term decisions, mm -hmm. capital assets, and master planning. We haven't gotten where we are by not planning. We have done for years uh, excellent planning as, as a body. And uh, with your leadership, we appreciate that. And I think that's a very reasonable thing to do. Oh, yeah. And I'd yeah. like to make a motion to schedule the hearing for the sixth. One, one point I mean, of clarification, yeah, if I may. We, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> let's make let everybody make some comments. So there's there's no no there's no debt new debt for either the general fund expenditures or the water and sewer. Water and sewer fund. We have some projects ongoing. Right. Those major no things, but nothing in the budget proposed. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Hildebrand, thank you very much for your work and our um, Donna, of course, being our finance director, Joshua, and all our department heads that are, are listening in. And tonight we know it's been a lot of work putting this together. Uh, great presentation. We appreciate the, the work, the thought, the effort that has been made to find every possible way to uh, do the right things for our city. And uh, I certainly feel like that's what's, what's been done. We'll get a chance Thursday night to discuss it more. And any other questions you might have, this gives you between now and then time to put those together and think about that. Hopefully after that, we we could have another one if we need to, but hopefully we'll get most of it uh, knocked out Thursday at our budget work session just to, just to clean it up. But a lot of work's gone into putting this together, yes. and we certainly appreciate everybody's efforts to uh, to be a part of that. And, uh, Anyway, we uh, can save that we're doing it and we're finding ways to, to make improvements. Uh, appreciate the council's work together. Uh, I've always tell people across the state when I meet that we have one of the best council, if not the best council in the state of North Carolina. And we're very proud of uh, that ability to work together. And we always seem to find a way to do that without with very little uh, problems. 
in, in doing so. So we appreciate the efforts that are done there. So if there's no other questions, uh, we will entertain a motion from Council Member Stevens for the uh, public, public hearing, hearing to be held on Tuesday, June the 1st of 2021. That would be to consider uh, the uh, recommended budget as presented for approval at that time. So have a motion on that. Any other discussion? If not, we'll call for the question. All in favor for that public hearing, please say uh, yay, <laughs> nay, or whatever. Yay. <laughs> Aye. 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 <laughs> that works. Aye. 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 Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> and that stands unanimous. We, we appreciate that. And uh, we will look forward to uh, to putting this together and, and being ready to vote in uh, whatever in June. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we do not have a uh, public hearing tonight uh, as we had put on the agenda. Thought we might have to have one, but we do not. I think, and and I'll ask uh, Mr. Session. City Attorney. Closed session, you mean? I mean, excuse me, closed session. We do not have a closed session for tonight, as was looked on our agenda. We do not have it, uh, Mr. Attorney. Anything to come from from you? No, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I do not have any recommendations of anything at this point. I know we're working on a lot of of different things about our uh, boards and everything. I uh, appreciate this the staff and their work of putting that together. We're trying to clean up that so that we don't have to come all the time and try to get it in a more uniform manner. And I appreciate the work that's going on uh, for that. And we'll talk more about that when it comes. Uh, anything from any of our council members tonight? If not, we stand adjourned. <laughs>